This is recording number W487 from the Soundword Tape Ministry of the Church on the Way, the first four square church of Van Nuys, California. This is the April 1987 worship tape. Now let's, let's come completely clean. How many of you are in this service because you forgot to change your clock? Let's see. Okay, now that's the ones that forgot to change your clock, right? Okay, how many are in this service? You didn't forget to change your clock. You just decided, I'm going to sack in and go to a later service, so I usually go to nine. How many of those are there? You're going to be amused by an observation of what this has done to a lot of people. You see in a little bit. But I think you ought to turn to the person next to you right now and say to them, you look just like you do an hour ago. <laughs> go ahead, tell them. You really do. Sing with me, will you? This is the day. This is the day.
the Lord right now. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord. Praise you, Jesus, for you are a good God. You are a magnificent Lord. We praise you, Lord. We welcome you. We worship and adore you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. How we worship and adore you. How we praise you this morning, Lord, and put you first in everything, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's sing together. Come to the Holy of Holies. Father, this morning in Jesus' name we assemble, exalting his name because you have affirmed, Father, you are pleased that your Son be praised, and because you, Spirit of God, have affirmed that you will move in the presence of any people that praise the Son. And so we honor Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This morning we come to say, Jesus, be welcome in our midst. Father, we ask that you glorify Jesus in a special way. Let their glory of your kingdom come and your will be done in this house as it is in heaven. And let there be more than merely rejoicing. Let there be transformation. Let there be the revelation of your truth to our hearts that we go away seeing ourselves in a way that not only causes us to want to be changed, but seeing ourselves under the touch of your power that gives the ability for the transformation. We thank you for your great love and mercy, Father, and your open acceptance of us through your Son, Jesus. And so with gratitude we come, thankful for this hour of worship, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen. It's uh, just such a terrific time in uh, coming to the Lord's table, and today as we focus on it, you're going to want to say, thank you, Lord, for your love. I want you just to get ready for the hymn we're going to sing by greeting people around you, and you say to them, thank the Lord for his love. Go ahead, greet that way.
tell by the arrangement of the platform that there's some big doings going on here tonight, and uh, that's the reason on this communion Sunday, where usually the full choir is with us, that we have the chorale. We're not suffering thereby, but I wanted to use it as an occasion to not only thank them because they also sing with the choir, but to uh, call attention to the, the big deals that are happening tonight. All that, tell somebody next to you, big goings on here tonight. Come on, tell them. There's an interesting nuance in a verb that occurs in the prophecy of Zephaniah. It's a tiny little three-chapter book buried in the back of the Old Testament, and it's like every portion of the Word of God is precious and powerful. But in that passage, the Bible says that the Lord will sing and rejoice over his own, over his children. And the nuance in the verb in the Hebrew literally says that God dances with joy over those who are his own. How many people live out their life though they've come to Christ? They live with a sense of merely being tolerated by God, and he delights in his own. And there's something about understanding that that'll change your own pattern of behavior. When you realize how much he delights in you, it does something to ignite in you the desire to live a way that's delightful to him. I think that oftentimes we get the cart before the horse, tell people, you be good, then God will be happy with you. Listen, he loved you and he loved me while we were still sinners. And he's delighted that we've become his own. He didn't need us, but he loved us and reached to us. We needed him. Now he says, now that you've come, I want you to know how happy I am your home. Listen, the crowd's gonna sing for us. Father will joy over you and rejoice and dance with that joy.
just sing and, and do this just like, just like children on Palm Sunday. Just it's so simple, but we're so sophisticated. Me too. I mean, this, it isn't easy to be as classy as I am and do this. <laughs> Seriously, not for any of us. Would you just, just do like this, sing, glory, glory. on Palm Sunday that as Jesus rode into Jerusalem that somehow the rocks would cry out if the people didn't if they didn't declare his greatness his majesty the entry of the king that somehow the creation around them would simply explode because praise had to be given had to be offered and today I don't know how exactly you feel but there's something inside of you that needs to praise the Lord needs to lift your hands the Bible says that. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. And I'm going to invite you right now. Would you lift your hands with me? Just begin to declare His praises. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise you and magnify you this day. Praise your name, Jesus. Glory, glory to your name, Lord. Glory to your name, Jesus. We praise you. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Praise your name, Jesus. Glory, glory to your name. You who are Savior, God, and King. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. All oh, glory. Glory to your name. Just sing with me, will you? Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God.
Jesus be to your name, Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. Glorious Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to your name. Like children joining hands, Father, as other times as children we would join hands and, and skip to school, or join hands and form a circle and play a game. We come today in the, not to play games, but to rejoice as children. We do come, Lord, to be schooled in your presence. And like children, Lord, we ask that you would receive our praise this, this Palm Sunday and that the same thing would happen in this house that happened long ago at the temple in Jerusalem where first you purged out everything of the shallowness of religion that has gone cold and you turned over the tables. Lord, we pray you would upset in us anything that is less than simply childlike and available to your rule on your terms. And then, Lord, having done that, the word says that that day, that Palm Sunday long ago, that the sick were brought unto you and you healed them. And we pray, Lord, that your healing grace, life, and power flow in this house. And there come the glory of the Lord visiting us today as we worship you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just release hands and that'll free you to join several others. And while you're, while you're turning to greet several other people, uh, let me encourage you to, to greet them by saying, this Palm Sunday, here's a palm right here just greeting you. Go ahead, greet them. song and I know how he likes to sing it but I want it just a tiny bit slower Linda and if he starts snapping in the background you follow me <laughs> shall we sing come and be king
morning, I would like for everybody to welcome Rainbow. Go ahead and do it right now.
Great. Can we do another one? Can we do another one? Uh, Diana Cunha, who uh, leads them, and it's just super Diane and kids. This is so, uh, we really, can you tell they like it? Huh? Yeah. They think you're big potatoes. <laughs> uh, they're going to help us get into Easter time. We've got a week to go to Easter, so we've got an Easter song coming up, right? So maybe, are the words going to be there? Maybe you can kind of sing along with them after they get us taught. We're going to save two of them for next week, and we're tuning for Easter. But don't sing this last one without making up your mind that you're tuning every part of you for Easter. Easter isn't just a great service next week, but it's your touching people and reaching out in advance and having the love of Jesus happen in you so that it helps people want to come and to be a part of a great day of celebration. And it also involves the preparation of our hearts through Good Friday. And uh, I want you just as we sing this last verse, letting the hallelujahs fill the room and the skies thereby to be setting your hearts on being an Easter person this week. Let your life count for Jesus. Let's sing this last verse with that commitment in our hearts and minds as well. Sing, Christ has risen.
join hands with people beside you and let's enter into an agreement that this day is not just a day of Easter celebration, but a day in which we invite the presence of our resurrected Lord among us. We're not observing a point in history. We're living out a moment of destiny and of his appointment with us now. And I want to encourage every single one of us to come with that availability. The Lord wants to meet us today. What he did and accomplished long ago and what we celebrate today is for today for more than mere celebration, but for our participation and entry into. Shall we agree on that? Amen. Holy Father, as we come in Jesus' name, our hands are joined, our voices are lifted in praise. We've sung, we've spoken praises, and as we join hands now, we do it in agreement before your throne. We indicate that it is our, our desire, Lord, to welcome you into our midst. Work among us. Let your kingdom come in a special way in this hour, that there be more than merely an observation, let there come a realization of your grace and power. We thank you today for the triumph of our Savior, your Son, Jesus. And we acknowledge that with joy today. And Lord Jesus, we welcome you to work in each of our hearts in a way that will please the Father's purpose and fulfill what it was you died to redeem us unto. Now we pray that accordingly as you taught us to pray. Would you join me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You take your hands and just like, like a child, Let's just each one put our hands like this, and would you, would you sing to the same melody we just sang? Would you sing, I'll worship you, or I'll praise your name this Easter? I'll praise your name this Easter. Sing, I'll praise your name. people in a moment, you can say to them, well, we have at least a mild degree of elbow room in this service. It was, uh, we have had just phenomenal crowds. It's our fourth service this morning. It's just been a thrilling thing to get to greet so many today. We usually have a lot, but even with extra service, it's just been thrilling. And I don't think you came to hear a report on numbers, and that's not what I'm talking about, but I'm just pleased that you're here. And there's people near you that deserve a personal greeting. And so I want you to give it. And I'm going to suggest we do something that's just a slight adjustment. Number one, most of you are aware of the fact that in Europe, that the way that they greet people on Easter Day, and it's carried over in our custom, and we've done it for years here at the church, that you, you greet by saying, Christ is risen. And the response is, he's risen indeed. Let's practice. Christ is risen. Okay. You all said Christ is risen, and I was, I was saying that to you. You say Christ is risen to me. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Now, that's, that's a very stately enunciation. But we live in the San Fernando Valley. And it occurred to me, occurred to me yesterday that there is such a thing as valley talk, you know. And I don't, I don't, I, I don't I, we're not reducing the glory of that great statement, uh, but we're just contemporizing it. Uh, do, dare we do this? The response, you open by saying, Jesus is alive, and the answer is, for sure, for sure. Okay? Go ahead, greet people around you. Greet people around you.
everyone. Anybody out here love Jesus? Amen. Let's stand together. It's been such a profitable morning. This is the first time you've been here uh, this morning for most of us. But for some of us, this is the third time. And getting, it to do, getting to do it all a third time is as much a thrill for me as I hope it's going to be for you to have gone through it once. So let's lift up our voice and begin by declaring Jesus as Lord and as, as our Deliverer, as our Savior. Sing all hail the power of Jesus' name with me, will you? Sing all hail the power of Jesus' name.
our voice in praise, church. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Oh, glory, glory to your name, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Singing great is the Lord and worthy of we declare we declare with open hearts with hands extended to those beside us we declare that your presence is amongst us this day and that we have gathered together to honor the name of Jesus your son our Christ the risen Lord of all of glory the one who has come to redeem mankind from his failure we come holding hands to you know, to, to make the statement that we are united we are united in that Easter work Standing a week past, we are the vivid proof that spanning 20 centuries of time, life still is generated because Jesus lives forevermore. We hold hands to make that great declaration that you, Lord Jesus Christ, are the one who fills all in all. You fill us with life. We hold hands because we desire the life that we possess to be extended to each and every one of those around us. Through us, may your life be extended. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence to move amongst us today. We ask that you would release each and every one of us to allow you to work on our minds, to work on our hearts, to work on our bodies. That there would not be any fear in our gathering as we come before you, but that with open countenances before Father God, we each would realize how we have audience through Jesus who has given us that audience and who has purged us each from sin. We gather together to make a bold declaration that Jesus lives over all and Jesus lives in us. We praise your name this day, Lord. We are so happy to join together here in one place. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 You sense with me the joy of gathering together? I can't say in this service like I said in the other two services that some of you probably are still asleep. At least it's not legitimate to say it in this service. <laughs> Pastor Jack is not here today. He has just finished, and is going to tell us a little bit more about him in a couple moments, but he finished talking to about 35,000 people in Seoul, Korea. He had the great joy of addressing the Full Gospel Central Church, which is the world's largest church. Dr. Paul Young Cho had him come and speak, and uh, Pastor with a number of our elders are over in Korea because God is doing such tremendous things amongst us and doing such tremendous things 
with them over there that we went over to just seep in a little bit of the grace of God. So they ask our pastor to speak. Can you imagine a service of 35,000 people one time, one time, in one place? I think that's shades of things to come. Pastor's just getting ready for something to happen here. We laugh, but I believe that that's a prophetic statement of the grace being extended that God wants to do through our midst. Part of that grace was evidenced last Sunday morning when in this room there were 10,000, over 10,000 people who gathered together to worship Jesus. Those of you who have been in this church for a number of years would, we've ne would have never guessed there would be 10,000 people in our church. God brought people in. And truly the phenomenon, the phenomenon of the resurrection is that more than 200 people accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior last week. Isn't that great? I said earlier in my prayer, the great truth is that Easter worked. Here we are. We are vivid examples of the truth that Easter is alive and well. Easter lives with us today. Jesus lives in each and every one of us. Those great miracles of the 200 people who accepted the Lord, the 10,000 people, are things that God wants to extend through each and every one of us. He just wants to keep making us larger. That's God's plan, making us larger. As we greet one another, let me first make a, a general greeting to all of you who might be visiting with us today and are greatly disappointed that our pastor is not here. I greet you on his behalf. My name is Jim Toll and this is Scott Bauer and it's our joy to gather together because the Lord shows up. The Lord shows up whenever you get together with us. And uh, I'd like us to greet one another, make sure we get each other's names, but greet each other with this statement. You can put it in your own words, but say something to the effect of, Eternity's working in you. You might need that confirmation. You might have had just a dismal week. You might have awakened on the wrong side of the bed, as my mom used to say. Or you might have your bed with you. I don't know. <laughs> but let's affirm the truth of Resurrection Sunday, which we celebrated last year, as being something that's appropriate today. And by saying, eternity is alive and well in you. Hug each other, get to know each other. Go ahead. praises to Jesus we can have because of the elders and the pastor's trip to Korea. 
Dr. Bird was so gracious yesterday. He called me and he said, I'm calling all the widows to see how they're doing today. <laughs> and we are all doing well. Jack has called me twice this week, once after they had been to Tejan and ministered in our own mission work there. And uh, there were about 7,000 in attendance, 60 accepted the Lord, and between 50 and 15 and 20 were filled with the Spirit. So it was a real exciting time to everybody, uh, their trip to Tejan. Our primary work in Korea is with high schools. And uh, so it w I don't know if the congregation was primarily those high school kids or not, but whatever. It was an exciting report we received. Uh, Dr. Cho usually just has, has guest speakers speak only in one service. And he said to Jack the other day, I want you to speak in two. So Jack felt very, very uh, excited and honored to be able to speak in that great church two different times today. And Glenn Shoemaker was going to sing at one of the services. So it's, uh, it, they're flying, folks. We'll never hear the end of this trip when they get home, I'm sure. One of the exciting things was uh, he told me that it was reported on the front page of the Seoul Korea newspaper that Jack Hayford was in town. And uh, <clears throat> the reason given in the newspaper article is that he was a spiritual advisor to President Reagan. <laughs> And I don't know that he's had much personal input, but he's had an awful lot of prayer input to President Reagan, so they weren't entirely wrong after all. I want you to note particularly the left-hand page today. It speaks mine and Jack's heart to each one of you concerning our daughter's wedding. And uh, it is very difficult for us to make a guest list because we would like to send an invitation to each one of you personally I think you know that's probably an impossibility, but do know that from our hearts, we want you to feel free to attend Christie's wedding on the 9th of May and come and weep with us. It's our last, our last child, our nest will be empty, and uh, the Lord is piling on more work, so I don't think it's, we're going to sit there twiddling our thumbs at all, but it will be an exciting time for us and a great affair in our own family and we would like for you to feel free to join with us. Shall we sing the last two verses together? Mm -hmm. 